In this video, I'm going to show how you can onboard merchants or sellers to your Bubble app and allow them to create their own Strike Connect Express account. You'll see here I'm clicking on this button and it's bringing us to this Stripe onboarding portal where we can register our details and it will then allow those sellers to accept payments with Stripe on your platform. If we take a look at the Connect section of my Stripe dashboard, we should see that the user that I was logged in as on Bubble, which is lhamilton at testmail.com. They've just created an account. Their status is currently restricted because we haven't fully submitted all the information Stripe needs for them to accept payments, but that's how that process begins. Before getting into the workflows in our Bubble editor behind this onboarding, I just wanted to talk for a second about Stripe Connect. Stripe Connect is a product designed by Stripe that makes it easy to implement marketplace payments in your application. An example of this might be Airbnb, where the guest spends $100 and Airbnb, the platform, uses Stripe Connect to process this payment. The payment is split between the host, who gets 80% of that $100, and Airbnb, the marketplace or platform, that gets $20. So in your case, you might be designing a bubble app whereby you want other users to be able to sell goods or services on your platform, with you then taking a cut of each transaction. You can use a number of different account types when setting up user accounts on Stripe Connect, Standard, Express, and Custom. In our case today, we're going to be looking at Express accounts, which are recommended for marketplaces by Stripe and are really easy to set up. The last thing I want to point out before we go into our bubble editor is once you've enabled Stripe Connect, which is quite easy to do, you will need to click a few buttons when you click Connect for the first time to do so. But one really important step is you need to go to your Settings tab and you need to go to Connect Settings and then you need to make sure that you've updated your business's branding down here. Now, you can't actually do this on test mode, which is where we are at the moment. But if you click off that, you'll see here you'll have the option to put in your business name, the payout statement descriptor, icon, brand color, and accent color. You do need to fill out these fields before we go about building our onboarding flows, or else it will not work. Just for your reference, trade this tutorial, I'm going to be using an old Stripe account for a business I had called Qualified, which is why you'll see that name pop up now and then. Now we can go over to our bubble editor. And throughout this tutorial, we're going to be using this plugin here. This is the Stripe Connect Marketplace plugin. It's a paid plugin developed by myself. You can find it by clicking on Add Plugins and searching for Stripe Connect Marketplace. And you can either subscribe to it or purchase it on a one-off basis. It gives you access to a ton of different features. And you'll see here there's a very comprehensive demo app that comes with the plugin. If you click on this, you'll see it here. And in addition to detailed instructions, various demo workflows, it also comes with several really detailed tutorial videos in addition to the one you're watching now. And in order to get this plugin working, we need to fill out a few fields down here. You can see I've already done it, but I'm just going to delete these and recreate it from scratch for your benefit. And these are some API keys. And we get these in the developer section of our Stripe dashboard. So let's go back into test mode because that's what I'm going to use for this tutorial. And if we click on developers here, and if we click on API keys, you'll see here the publishable key is viewable straight away. And you can copy that, go back into your plugin, which is here, copy that in the publishable key dev field. And then we're going to do the same thing for a Stripe secret key. So go back to your dashboard, we're going to reveal the test key, we're going to copy that, and we're going to paste it into the Stripe secret key dev field. And then finally, we also need to paste something into this API key dev field here. And what we're going to do is we're going to type the word bearer, B-E-A-R-E-R, -E -E put in a space, and then paste in the secret key one more time. So you can see here, the secret key here is exactly the same as what's up here, which is just a bearer and a space before it in this particular field. Now, the last thing we need to do before actually building out the relevant workflows is we need to go to our database. And I'm going to add two custom fields to our user type. The first one is going to be called Stripe Account ID and it's going to be a text field. This is going to be a unique identifier for each seller on your platform. It is a Stripe field, so again, Stripe will use it just to identify which seller is which when they're processing payments. The second thing we're going to add is a field called charges enabled. And you can see here I'm putting a question mark after it. That's because it's a yes or no field. So we'll come on to why this is important later. Quite an important field to have in your database. We can now move on to building out the actual workflows. And you'll see here, I have a pretty simple profile page set up. It just consists of the current user's email 
and it has a button here that says create Stripe Express account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a workflow to this particular button here. And you can see here I already have a couple of things in. So let's just delete them and then we can do it from scratch. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to plugins and you'll see here there's a bunch of workflow actions that are now available because we've installed the Stripe Connect Marketplace plugin. And the one we're going to use here is going to be called Create Express Account. Now, there's a number of fields that we need to fill out here. The first one is the country in which the business who is selling the good on your marketplace resides. This must follow a particular format. You can see here it must be a two-digit country code, for example, US for the USA or CA for Canada. You can see a full list of the kind of eligible two-digit country codes at that URL link there. The next thing we need to put in is the email of the person who is registering. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go for current user's email. Payout interval. This describes how frequently the merchant or seller gets paid out after they've made sales of goods or services. So if you set this to daily, then they're going to get paid out on every single day. Uh, any new sales or any new sales they've made, they'll get the funds from those sales. You can pay it on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. It's really up to you. If you set this to weekly, you're going to need to choose a weekly anchor, which is the day of the week on which the seller is going to get paid out. And similarly, if you pick monthly, which is what I'm going to do here, you need to pick a day of the month on which the seller is going to be paid out. I'm going to put in the first day of every month. So when we click the button, an Express account is actually going to be created for the user who clicks the button. But we need to save down some data here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to account and I'm going to go to make changes to the current user. And I'm going to change the two fields that I just created. So I'm going to say Stripe account ID equals results of step one, it's Stripe account ID. And then charges enabled, for now, we're going to set them to no because we haven't completed the onboarding. So Stripe is actually not going to allow the merchant to process payments at this stage. We're therefore going to set that to no. And in fact, what we can actually do, instead of maybe setting it as no there, what we could do is we could just set it by default to be no, and then we can change it in a bit when the information has been validated, we can then change it to yes. So let's delete that for now. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back down to the plugin section. We're going to go to Stripe Connect, create onboarding link. And again, we have three fields to fill out here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put in the results of step one, the Stripe account ID. We actually saved this down in step two, so you could access it there as well, but let's keep it simple and put it in there. Refresh URL. This is the URL that the user is going to be redirected to if for some reason the onboarding link isn't valid. Maybe it's, usually, maybe it's already been used, maybe it's invalid for some other reason, but that's where the user is going to be directed. What do you typically want to do in a snap? What you typically want to do when something like this happens is redirect them just to the page they are already on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to insert dynamic data and I'm going to search for this URL, which is just going to redirect them to the page that they were on before they left to go to the onboarding portal. I do want to let Bubble know that the onboarding link was invalid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a page URL parameter here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in this question mark and I'm going to say refresh equals true. I'm going to do a very similar thing for the return URL. This is where the user, this is where the user is going to be redirected to after successfully completing the Stripe Express onboarding. So again, I'm going to go to Insert Dynamic Data, search for this URL, and this time I'm going to put in return equals true. And we're nearly there. The last step we need to do to get to the onboarding portal is go to Navigation, open an external website, and then we're going to insert dynamic data and do the result of step three and its URL, which has been popped in there automatically. So let's refresh our page and take a look at that. I'm going to log out just because we've already created an account for lhamilton at testmail.com. So we'll sign up a brand new user. And you can see here we have a new user, c signs at testmail.com. And let's click on create Stripe Express account. Okay, and that seems to be working. As I mentioned earlier, qualify is the name of the app that I'm 
using for this demo. That's why you're seeing that name there. But you can see here we brought to this onboarding portal. And if we go to our demo database and take a look at app data, what we should see is we now have another user and the Stripe account ID is saved down there. And if we go back into Stripe Connect on our Stripe dashboard, what we should see is we have a new user, see signs. And sure enough, that is their account details just down here. You can see that it ends in DFW, and you can see that it ends in DFW. So we're saving down the account ID that's up here into our bubble database. Now, I'm going to go through this onboarding process. This is assuming that the person registering to be a seller is based in the US. This is going to be slightly different depending on the geographic region you're based in. For example, I'm based in the UK, and this is going to look different if I had chosen a UK country uh, for the person that was being onboarded. So I'm going to go through this quite quickly. Okay, and I'm going to stop here for a second because at the moment we're missing some details, but I can still agree and submit here. So if I click on agree and submit, what's going to happen is I will have a Stripe Express account, but it's not going to be valid. It's going to finish up here as restricted. And we want to check that in our bubble app when we go back to bubble, which we're going to do in a second. So for this example, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on agree and submit now. And you can see now that if we go back into our Stripe dashboard, go to connect, you'll see Carlos Science is still restricted. So now what we could do to ensure that C Science can complete the onboarding is we go back to our design tab and we could say on this button here, we could say when the current user's Stripe account ID is not empty, so when there is a Stripe account ID in there, this is not going to be visible. And we'll untick that and we're going to collapse when it's hidden. And then what we could do is we could get this, paste it down here, and we could say complete onboarding. And we could say this is only visible when the current user's Stripe account ID is not empty. So hopefully now if we refresh this page, what we should see is this button show up and this button to disappear. And you see that is the case. Now we do need to give C Science access to the onboarding portal again. So what we're going to do is we're going to Stripe Connect, create onboarding link, and we're going to say current users Stripe account ID. Refresh URL. Again, we're going to go with this URL. Refresh equals true. And then we can copy that, paste that in there, and say return equals true. And then we're going to navigate to that link. And then C sign should be able to complete their onboarding. So let's see if we can complete our onboarding here. And it looks as though we couldn't confirm your name in SSN. So because I've given a, a made up social security number, Stripe doesn't seem to like that. So I'm actually going to go through this with a fresh account just so we can see what it looks like when it's fully set up. But before we do that, what I do want to do is back on this profile page here, I want to check whether charges have been enabled or not. So has Stripe validated that the information we provided was correct? And can we start processing marketplace payments? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this text element, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to change it to charges enabled. And I'm going to change the dynamic data here to be current users charges enabled. And you might remember by default, we're setting this to no. But what we can do is we can say, when the page is loaded, we can make changes to the current user. We're going to change our charges enabled to get data from an external API. And these are all additional API calls that come with the plugin. And we're going to say retrieve account details. We're going to say account ID equals to the current user's Stripe account ID. And then we're going to say, there's a bunch of fields here we can actually get data on, but we're going to get charges enabled. So let's refresh our page. 
you're not going to notice anything now because the charges enabled are still going to be no on C signs. But let's assume, um, let's just change out the yes to show it working in the background. So these charges haven't actually been enabled. But if we refresh our page, we should see this change from a yes to a no. And you can see that's happening there. But let's log out of C signs. And we're going to create a new account. And just so I can make sure that I can um, complete the onboarding, I'm going to change the country here to Ireland, i.e., just because I'm more familiar with their requirements. And I can see here that I should have one of these hidden. So the onboarding one should be hidden uh, when it's empty. That should not be visible. And yeah, that's fine. So this time, let's onboard G. Russell and make sure that this account is fully enabled and we get that charge enabled to turn to yes. Okay, I'm gonna fly through this. Okay, so I fill in all the details required for George Russell. Uh, so let's agree and submit on that. And we're brought back to our profile page. You can see here return equals true is in the page URL. That's just to show that we were previously being onboarded and now we're here and you can see here that charges enabled are yes so that has worked and if we go to our stripe account dashboard and we refresh you'll see here latest account grosletestmail.com status is enabled so this merchant can process marketplace payments you probably don't want to show this complete onboarding button when the user has been onboarded what we could do is we could say or when the current user's charge is enabled is yes, it's also not going to be visible. That should get rid of that there. Yeah, and you can see that's gone now. We could add in one last button. Uh, what we could say is we could copy this, paste it down, and we could say only when the current user's charge is enabled is yes, is this going to be visible? Uh, in fact, what we could say, probably a bit safer, is when it's no, it's not going to be visible. And we give access to the Stripe Express dashboard. And this is a really nice dashboard where users can view sales they've made and their, their payouts that they're due. So we'll put that in there. And we're going to add a workflow. And we're going to go to plugins. And we're going to say Stripe Connect, create Express dashboard link, Stripe account ID. It's going to be the current user's Stripe account ID. And then we're just going to go to navigate, open an external website. I'm going to be the result of step one, it's URL. So let's refresh. And uh, if we go to Express Dashboard, you'll see here this is the beginning of it. It's going to put in fake numbers for now. And then we're brought into this really nice area here where we've got details on our business, how much is pending, how much is on the way. Um, and just a really nice way for merchants to track the transactions that they made on your bubble app. One last thing I want to show you is back on our profile page. This refresh equals this, I think it's return equals true is what we hit. And yeah, this return equals true page URL parameter. It can be really useful because if you want to say, you know, show the user that yes, they have been successfully onboarded, what you could do is you could put in a pop up here. And you could say, you know, um, put in the text, congrats, you've created a Stripe account. And then what you could do is you could say, when the page is loaded and only when get data from the page URL, when refresh, is true, then you would show the pop-up. You would show an element, put in a pop-up, and you could also say only when get data from an external API, retrieve account details, 
current user's Stripe account ID only when charge is enabled is yes are we going to show that pop-up so we're checking you know first of all is refresh equals true in the page url and secondly are charge enabled equal to yes and if both of those conditions are met which are going to be when i refresh this page we're going to show that pop-up or at least we should be showing that pop-up ah because it's return i should have said get return from the page url so we'll refresh it one more time And you can see there, you're getting that notice. Congrats, you've created a Stripe Express account is what should be in there. So hope this has been useful. I'm going to leave a link to this demo app in the description. Uh, it's going to be available for everyone to view. And if you have any other questions, you can let me know in the comments.